the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. We just had a great Bible study. I mean, I'm talking about the fact is that I, I did a little preliminary session uh, on Saturday. Was talking about the fact is, talking about the affirmative action plan, right? And we talked about the fact is that the Supreme Court said then said, we're gonna just, we just gutted affirmative action because we are a colorblind nation. And you know what? God says that we are all one body. You know, so our body is it's not not talking about the spiritual body that we're all a part of. Is 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 also supposed to be colorblind, right? And also supposed to recognize the importance of every piece of the body. That if one part of the body hurts, and all the parts of the body hurts, and if one part of the body rejoices, and all the parts of the body rejoices, and it'd be great for us to get there to to that point where we all operate as one. We all see things not based on the color of our skin, but the content of our character, and that we don't base our content of our character based on the images or narrative that other people try to put on us as individuals or as a collective group. We're not all racist, we're not all uh, bad or murderous or all that, no, no. We, 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 we special us supposed to be the part of the body of Christ, we operate in love, not in hate. So we, you know, so we covered a lot of the scriptures today, and and uh, we one of the things we covered. First of all, let's make sure I give you the uh, title that we had. Let me see if I can get that up for you. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't get that up. Let me see. Let me bring it up to the scripture all the way up, and then I'll show it to you. The title uh, that we had is this right here. And it said that, and you see the title when you actually pull up the, the slide, but it said, God is our chief affirmative action planner for eternal life. I made it too heavy because I did one on Saturday. And, and obviously the, what I did on Saturday is different from what I did today. But the bottom line is three, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only God's son to whosoever. See, whosoever is not based on the color of your skin, not based on you not based on anything except for you believing. You know what I mean? And maybe we get to the point in society that we recognize people as whosoever in any endeavor that they try to achieve. And then we don't sit there and try to sit there and hold somebody back or, or create, you know, like system, uh, systematic racism or anything else. We're going to sit there and say is that all of us need to look at one of us as one body. You know, just like one nation under God. Right? And so therefore we, we that's what we talked about. It's the subject for the day. And I and I it really brought home the fact is the importance of loving one another. And one of the pieces of the scripture that I like, the, we talked about the uh, first Corinthians. Let me show you this real quick. First Corinthians chapter uh, twelve. Starting in verse twelve. You can see the topic it says body with many members and you know I, I just started with just that read one verse because I just did this introduction is for as the body is one it has many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ we're all those of us that believe and I'm just talking about us as believers and the fact that the importance of us as believers is now the time to let our light shine and show people the love of God. You know, one of the things about that scripture and another scripture we're reading, we're talking about in 1 John chapter 3, and the fact is in the beginning, God wanted us to love one another. And he said, not as that wicked Cain who did the harmful things to his brother Abel, who was a righteous person, and righteous means right standing with God. And all of you that receive right, you're in the right standing with God. But if you have hated you, you have no eternal life abiding in you. And that's what we want to be able to talk about. 
did one of the things about the affirmative action plan, one of the things that Judge Thomas was talking about, the fact is that people sit there and say, you didn't belong here because you're a quota. But obviously, just some people thought you didn't belong here, period. And that's what the affirmative action was, to open those doors where people would say, you don't belong, you do belong. And if we have to create laws or affirmative action to open those doors, then go through those doors. But now, if we say, based on the Supreme Court, that the doors are open, and a person belongs there because of their talent, because of their education, because I don't think you probably know about it, but a lot of schools, based on the school you came from, a lot of the people that was in the front action plan, whether in the visual school, whether in the HBCU school, or whether in Harvard or Yale, they, they're, most of them are gifted, talented people get into MIT and into those schools. And the only difference are the people who don't have the gifts and may not have the education or the talent are those who are from the legacy. Meaning if you went to that school, then you your child has a right to go to that school. So therefore they may not have be a high achiever, but they were a legacy. So what we want to do is make sure that we as a body of Christ encourage and edify one another and do the right thing. So I hope you enjoy this video. We're obviously gonna break it down to part A, B, C, D, whatever it needs to do to complete it. And just listen to the fact is that God has a affirmative action plan for eternal life, meaning whether you are an African American, whether you are European American, whether you're an Asian American, whether you are Chinese American, whether you are Jew or Gentile, God has an affirmative action plan that when you get to heaven, ain't nobody gonna say you don't belong there. Nobody gonna sit there and say you are poor. Everybody gonna sit there and say that it plays God for you and for me to be here then praise God. Amen. So I hope you enjoy the study, and I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye-bye. And that's another reason why people are uh, uh, fearful. And we need to be, and that's why I think people, everybody who would listen to this recording, want to analyze everything, you know what we're trying to get to? Is that those of us in Christ, whether you are African American, whether you are European American, whether you're Asian, Hispanic, whatever, in Christ, we're not to take the past and the actions of others and, 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 and want to get revenge because that doesn't fit into the narrative of Christianity, the narrative of forgiveness, right? The narrative of love. We want you to understand is that you should feel good about being a child of God. And you you don't want to be to take on negative behavior to be evil so that you'll fall into that statement, I never knew you. you that's all we're trying to tell you. See, I, we all know there's no colorblind because we the system, the world system created this, these different layers of division to keep everybody fighting each other. We is a time for us as believers, and I, you know I'm talking to the camera, I'm really not talking to you, right? As believers is to, I, you know I like the Isaiah 60, right? Where it says, rise and shine for the light has come. Remember that one I used before? It's, it's, it's now. Is what we're trying to say, because because if you if we recognize the, do you, I think you agree with that, right? If we recognize it, they recognize it, don't they? Yeah. yeah. What, what we're trying to you tell people, <laughs> you can't read this continually read the scripture without the revelation coming. Ah, you know exactly. We, sooner or later, the the revelation is going to push past the the boxed in, you know, uh, understanding. Yeah. You know, you, you're, 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 you can't, you can't keep reading these, these scriptures and not you get can't. understanding of what God is truly saying. The and I found out. Will come. Yeah. It, I it's found just, out. It's just, it's just how it is. 
I found out that, did you know, I found out yesterday, first of all, for those of the people in the scripture, then I'm gonna go say that to you. The, uh, I, I found out that a lot of the arguments that I that we get from with people, they argue based on what they heard, not what they read. They don't study for themselves, right? But further, I want to make sure for all of us, well, for everything just was said and discussed, but I think it should be discussed. I think people should weigh in on those discussions if they can too, uh, and have open, frank conversations with with friends and relatives, knowing that we know that there's a lot of conversation goes on behind closed doors that try to continue to perpetuate racism and everything else. And all I'm trying to say is for you as a believer, you need to understand, you don't want to go before Christ. See, what we're doing, most of people get validated by their community and by their people that look like them. And, but you you got to understand, the only true validation is coming from God. So when I like to say, so I'm saying that I think it's time for believers. And I think, some, brother, I think you agree. Some people are believers. They are good believers. They are good people. They want to do right in society. They want to do right to people. You know, uh, and it's time for us to just rise and shine. So I like this scripture. You want to read it for me? It's from, the, from four to... Uh, I think one through four, right? Uh, or or five. Yeah. Five. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Mm -hmm. the most darkness. That's so much evil. Yeah. That's what it's but talking about. The Lord about. shall rise upon thee. Get that gross darkness in there too. Just get that gross darkness. I, you yeah. you skip past that. I, I say you're darkness, but you didn't put gross darkness with it. Yeah. So, so darkness. For behold, the darkness which is evil, evil. shall cover the earth. And then what? And and, and gross darkness which is gross. <laughs> it is, ain't it? It's it's it's, it's, it's like okay, well. You got the God of this world. He's covering. He's covering her. <laughs> but the people. <laughs> That's even exactly. It's on a whole nother level with the people. Come because on, bro. They're consuming. Woo. They're consuming. Yes, sir. This yes, evil. sir. Yeah. And they don't understand you're going to pay a price for it, too. Yeah. That's what we need to make sure people understand. There's a price you're going to pay for this. Either. Those people who are the ones you read before, those people are rewarded in heaven. They got yeah. tormented and tortured yeah. and everything else from gross, darkness people. But what we don't sometimes, there's a reverse on it, right? The yeah. gross, darkness there's, people. There's always the opposite. I mean, the other always, side. Always. Exactly. The other side. Yeah. Remember that, that scripture we read last week about Lazarus and the rich man? Yep. The rich man, I, I, the one that sticks out to me, and I just want people to catch that. Maybe you need to emphasize that many times. He said, Lazarus, he said, he said, uh, the rich man, remember in that lifetime, in that lifetime, you were comforted. But Lazarus was tormented. And now he is comforted. And you are tormented. And your torment is longer. The, 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 eternal. The, the, it's, it's the, eternal. That's the bad. That's the sad thing about it. You you know what I mean? And 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 I don't. I, I just people. You can't think that you can do bad. I, that's all. I think we we were talking about right. That's what we're trying to say. You can't sow this in your life and in your children's life from generation to generation. You can't. You you're not talking about it last week. The fact is, what do you think when you go over him? You go in by yourself for one thing. Those so many people that support you and justify and endorse bad behavior, they're not gonna go before you for the throne of God because they're already worried about themselves. And what you gonna say? Lord, I, I hated those people because I was told, you was told what? Well, I was told they less there. But they made in my image. Lord, I wasn't told that you was made. Lord, I, I I know I read that. You know, brother, they're going to say that, right? They read it, didn't they? Because who hasn't read the, the Genesis? 
chapter what? No, what they're gonna say is, but they're not they're not your image. I'm your image. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're gonna sit there, right? And that's what I'm saying about it. You're gonna go before God and you're gonna sit there and say, they are less than. And he's gonna say, under whose authority? Because I created them. Did, did I not create them or did you create them? And what's gonna be the answer? What's, what's the answer? There's only what's one the answer. There's only one answer. You created <laughs> You created them. So how do you tell, how did you tell the creator what he created? Tell the creator that I made less than sub, I made categories of people when I told you I created man in my image. That's what we're trying to say. So when we, when you read, so I'm gonna let you read this again because I, we're gonna go into the scriptures because this study, I wanna study it. One through four, five, I guess we're talking about. Go ahead, do it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, I'm that up. I didn't share it yet? I thought I hit it. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go Not from the beginning. That's good. Oh, from the beginning. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes around about, and see, all they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see, and flow together, and thine heart shall fear, and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. They can be coming. If we let our light shine, as the scriptures are saying here, the abundance, because when they talk about the sea, they're not talking about the ocean, they're not talking about the geographical body of water. They're talking about a multitude of people. Yeah. Yeah. And if they see the light shining out of what? Darkness. Because see, evil loves to stay in darkness. Mm -hmm. But when light comes in, that darkness has to move further away yeah. because the light is coming. And what we try to say, and even this platform is, I'm talking about whether you are European American, white American, you want to call it, even though it exists, that didn't exist until the 1800s, whatever, but whatever you want to call it, if you let your light shine, if you are an African American or a Black American or whatever you want to call yourself, let your light shine in Christ. You're making a difference. You're Hispanic and you let your light shine. Not this this militant seed that was taken with the with the Roman Catholic Church and then all the other churches afterward. Show your light, the light of love, the light of grace, the light of mercy, so that people can see it and say, I want to be there. Because I don't think, brother, I think that a lot of people don't want to be in darkness. I don't think people, I don't think a lot of people, I'm talking about a lot of people, I ain't talking about everybody, because there's some people that want to dwell in darkness. We agree with that. We know that. But I'm talking about you as a believer. If you don't be afraid to let your light shine. Because God wants us. And so therefore, let's go into these scriptures real quick. And 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 and, and we'll we'll get we'll wrap it up, but we let's go with some scriptures I want you to cover. At least five or six of the slides I really want to, to discuss. All right? Okay, for people. The sub the topic today. <laughs> brother, we just get to the topic today. <laughs> I, I I did it I did it Saturday, uh, but I, now this is called God is our chief affirmative action planner for eternal life. Planner also means His will and everything else, right? For eternal life, and see, like you say, equal opportunity is whosoever believes. He didn't say whosoever based on the color of skin. He didn't based on where you came from. He said whosoever believes. 
shall what? Have life everlasting. Shall not perish in eternal life, right? So, so we as believers, and this is this is what my edited version will be of, is the fact is that we want to be part of the chief affirmative action plan. We want to be part of the will of God for all mankind. So with that in mind, let's get some basic scriptures. We, we're going we're gonna to bypass the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. I always explain that, but the main key word I want to get out of the Lord's Prayer is Matthew 6.10. Read that for us, just 10. Look at your computer. You, you look to the left and to the right. You got two monitors or what? Yeah, I have two, two monitors. <laughs> <laughs> that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, what's the key to that piece right there? What, what was that? What does that tell you when you say, well, I will be done in earth as it is in heaven? It speaks for itself, don't it? It's, 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 it's obvious. His will. What, what, his will his what he wants <laughs> is done in her. right as and for will. us as ambassadors we must do his will yeah. right that what Christ did right <laughs> Christ said I don't do no more so what my father told me to do that's it that's it and that's all we're trying to tell people if 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 even the ten commandments saying thou shall not kill, thou shall not lie or bear false witness. And I saw, like I said, that video I saw last week, I mean, yesterday, that person was bearing false witness uh, to lots of more people. The people knew they was bearing false witness, right? The other piece is, and this is another critical of the Lord's Prayer, is I like the fact that it's 614, it said, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father wants to forgive you. But brother, I would 15 is trying to say. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And what I will say to you, and everybody is listening, is I, some of you are fearful to think that what happened to you, us to us, from the past, y'all were to this present, that we want to flip the script one day. Let me tell you something. It is not in our benefit as a group of people or as an individual to hold on and operate in unforgiveness and then to become evil. Evil is done to a lot of us, a lot of us. But if we 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 can't become what happen to us because that's not beneficial for my eternal life that's not beneficial to you <laughs> does that make sense I'm trying to get I don't know about some I'm, I know most people want to get eternal life is that that that, that true, true do you, you agree with that brother Asa? yeah most people want eternal life now can I get eternal life if I get into lynching people not according to these scriptures. Not according to the scriptures. I I can't be evil instead of getting to heaven. I can't even have heaven here if I become evil. Because that will be done in earth as in heaven means I need to do, unless I'm expecting, and hey, here's a good novelty, uh, Brother Asher. Unless we're expecting to have lynching in heaven. Are we expecting to have discrimination in heaven? No. Do any of you that, that believe as the scriptures I, I I read it said there's no more than that. There's none. So so what we try to say is that we should try to have a little bit of heaven while we're here because that's the will of the Father. So I don't know about and, and, and I also let I think you need to recognize and brother I'm gonna throw this at you, but you could tell them I I, submit, I surmise that the atrocities, those people who committed the atrocities of the past, and if they died in it, I'm suspecting 
Now you tell me that I'm suspecting. I am not expecting. I'm thinking that rich man went somewhere. And it wasn't pleasant. Do you have any justification of the people who committed atrocities? Do you have any rationale for us to say that they are in heaven? The only rationale that I have is the thief on the cross next to Yeshua. That asked. Pardon? He asked, though, didn't he? Yes. He, he asked. So what we're trying to say is that God's grace and mercy is for everybody who's willing, regardless of what you did, <laughs> if you had asked, if you repented, right? Because Christ said, I, I died for the ungodly. I didn't call the righteous. I came to call the unrighteous for repentance. If those people repented, then you will see them again. But if they did not, if they died, and the sad, sad thing about it is, they were taught a behavior, a way of thinking, all from generation to generation, right? They was taught it. And the chances of them changing their, hat, their mind and behavior, I don't know. I don't, all I know is this, I can't put them in hell. I can't, can't put them in heaven. And if I had the opportunity to try to put them there, I'm gonna have some hard time because they went to the extreme. John, I think it's first John chapter one, verse chapter three. It says, you hate his brothers and murder. No, no murder has eternal life and bodies in him. Is that what that, that scripture basis says, right? He who hated his brothers and murder, and no murder has eternal life and bodies in him. Do we need to show the people that? Well, I mean, uh, yes, but we need to give them the definition of that word. You know, because I mean the the the, the true meaning of that. You can dislike your brother for actions, or you can hate what a brother has done. And what is that? Yeah, hate somebody. You know that that I think that reaches into a demonic realm. Mm. Mm. Wow. I agree with you. I wonder what it's going to start off with because I got here uh, whoever hates his brother's murder. That's 315. First, first John chapter 3. Yeah. Uh, I wanted that to be read with it says we're, it's a good start in love one another, right? <laughs> and I mean, what is that's, that's obvious. <laughs> it is that's a like 24. It's like saying God one another. <laughs> it, it's true, right? Love one that's that's where it goes back to our equal opportunity and further action is eternal plan. Because the fall of man. What I what I was saying before y'all was the fall of man was the beginning of God's affirmative action plan. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.